Hey, this is Zane from Blue Table Painting. Uh, today we're gonna do a little technique called value tinting. And uh, basically what it is is you throw down some values using select colors with dry brushing and then you give a glaze to add the tone, the color that you really want. And what you get is uh, sort of color mixing to create some interesting hues in your undertones. Okay, so we're starting off with a miniature that's been primed black and given a red uh, overspray, which you can also achieve this with a dry brush. Um, these are your first two values. You've got a, a black shadow in the deepest recesses and then a uh, red highlight, which will act as an undertone later on. And so that's essentially what we do is we create uh, layers of values using interesting colors that will sort of show up later. So the next value will be a lighter color, but also in another interesting color, which is this middle stone. Okay, so we prepare a dry brush. Uh, what you do is you load the brush with plenty of pigment, and then you actually get most of the pigment off. You can sort of test out if your brush is, is ready to go. Just a little brush on the hand. If it's cool to the touch, it's probably too wet. So you just go into dry brushing. Nice layer there. So, just dry brushing on another uh, highlight. The middle stone is going to create uh, a nice highlight. Further in the recesses, you, you've got a uh, nice black shadow and red undertones. So that's pretty much what we're doing, is just creating the values. You'll see it all get tied together when I start applying the glaze. But for now, you just... Uh, you leave those colors in your values. You want to have red, black, and green at this point. So with dry brushing, uh, the idea is you add consecutive layers of value, but you're hitting the raised areas with your dry brush, letting the sculpt do the work for you. Okay, so our next step is to add another highlight with dry brushing. This is a pale sand, almost a creamy white. And this dry brush is going to be even softer um, hitting just the tops, just the very raised edges, less pigment on your brush, softer brush strokes. Here I'm pulling down, sort of simulate where the light would fall. And I want to leave those previous colors behind. Uh, the most important thing to remember about the dry brushing is to really keep those values intact throughout the, the process. I do this with a softer touch on each of the the layers of dry brushing. The lightest color is just hitting the very tops of the surface, and I can do this with downward brush strokes, uh, all sort of simulating the way the light would actually fall on the, the creature here. Um, really, you want to keep all the colors in there. We've got the cream highlight, we've got greens, uh, you've got a nice red undertone, and a black in the deepest shadows. So that's really it. You want to you want to be able to see each one because they're going to come into a, to play later during the glazes. Okay, on to the fun part where we add the color we want. I've chosen a nice uh, dark Prussian blue for the scales. So what I do is I just mix a glaze with water and pigment. And I'm going to add just enough water to where it's slightly thinner than skim milk consistency. You just have to play with it until you get the exact consistency you want. The only way to really tell is to put some on the miniature and see how it looks. It should be thin enough that you can see the previous colors you've laid down through the glaze. So it's, it should be somewhat translucent. When I've got the consistency of my glaze, I'm just applying it over the, the scales and the, the tops of the, the hands. And I've decided I want to have nice like pale underbellies with these rich blue scales. So that's all I'm doing at this point, is just targeting the areas that I want to give this color to. And what you'll start to see is the colors sort of blending on the model itself. With a translucent glaze, the red undertones there start turning purple. You're going to see yellows with the, the pale sand when you start blending. Really, you're letting the dry brush do the work for you, and you're just giving a nice thin coat. That's what a glaze is. It's a nice, even 
coat of a translucent paint. So really this is just uh, you're targeting where you want to put that color and making sure your consistency is nice and thin. Not too thin, like a wash, just a bit more pigment so it sits where you want and you don't let it pool up. That's, that's another really important thing to mention. Okay, so let's take a closer look, uh, see what we've done here. The blue glaze starts uh, showing these subtle undertones, these hues starts uh, popping out. Those red undertones are now like a purple. You've got nice, slightly warmer shadow. You can actually take uh, a glaze of different colors and you can tint the values that we've created over the entire model, like the jacket, uh, the hat, pretty much anything uh, that we've created the values on, you can tint to whatever color or tone that you want. Next, let's uh, add some, some color to the rest of the model. I'm going with this uh, sort of green brown ink. Uh, inks and washes are great as, a, as they're already sort of pre-mixed, they're already the perfect consistency to just to just throw down on these values you've created. Remember, with a glaze, the important thing is to do a nice even coat to the entire surface. So when you're doing it, just commit to finishing the entire area. Hit the entire top hat with a nice thin coat, and you'll start to see those undertones. They start showing through just a bit. After I've applied a nice thin layer, you, uh, you can do two thin layers if you need to, but those, uh, those undertones start showing through. And so you'll see that that red undertone has now become a nice rich brown undertone. And that's really what this is all about. It's, it's mixing colors just with nice, quick, simple steps. Uh, next we have a uh, brown ink. Again, uh, inks are really great for this technique. They're already the perfect consistency to just glaze with. So we're applying a nice thin coat to the his little jacket, a nice thin layer to the entire surface. And those undertones, in this instance, it's really just adding a, a nice warm shadow, that, that red. Again, you don't have to add any extra highlighting or shadows. That's already done. It's been done quickly and easily with just dry brushing. It takes a bit of experimentation, but as long as you're creating the values and the undertones, uh, you've really got a lot of freedom here, and and it comes up with some really nice results uh, with a little practice. So yeah, we're just sort of picking out you know the different materials with different tones, and you can start seeing really quick results. So let me show off a few finished examples here. Uh, the same techniques, just a blue glaze. He's got the white underbelly. I've added a few different undertones there, but it's just the same techniques, just a few different color choices in my dry brushing. And you can actually add a highlight after your glaze to create some more interesting colors later. Like I've taken a blue green and maybe a little yellow in there with a quick little dry brush so you get some interesting stuff. So here we go on Bloody Barnabas I've used the same techniques nice white underbellies, uh, rich blue scales with nice shadows and hues. On the jacket I gave it a an earthy orange, a ochre color as a dry brush and then a brown glaze and you've got a nice worn leather here. Um, it's a great technique it looks great, it's easy, so get creative and try it out. Uh, thanks a lot.